If it's now one o'clock, we'll get started. All right, so coming to you by way of the not-for-profit mainframe studios at 900 Kiowa in downtown Des Moines and by way of Art Week Live TV, this is a special edition of 900 Views, a podcast about building community through the arts as we build an arts community. I'm your host, Pat Bode, and my guest is multidisciplined artist, educator, and activist, Emmett Saw Phillips, Jr. Emmett is dedicated to arts, education, youth, and community development, and we can now add entrepreneurship to that list. In the midst of a pandemic, this Des Moines-raised hip-hop artist, poet, and actor has managed to launch an arts consulting and education business, Speak Your Peace. Easily found online at speakyourpeacellc.com, as long as you know that he spells peace there, P-E-A-C-E. Absolutely. Has been, yes. Emmett has been a youth program coordinator for the Children and Family Urban Movement, has served Oak Ridge Neighborhood and Edmonds Elementary in youth development, and has been involved in urban farming through Forest Avenue Outreach. He's also a teaching artist, having worked closely with Des Moines Public Schools, Culture All and A Step, artists striving to end poverty, just to name a few. But he also works hard at his own artistic development. I remember seeing you on stage, Emmett, in Raisin in the Sun, a pyramid theater production that was just outstanding, as, as they all are. And he's been on stage at the Playhouse <laughs> and with the Moyne Young Artists Theater and performed original hip hop and spoken word poetry from New York to New Mexico. And I'm so delighted to get to speak to you right now. So it is Art Week, so if we could just start this conversation with some of your Art Week activities, I think people would be interested in learning about how to connect with you for Art Week. And we may have a little bandwidth problem, we'll do our best. Yes, yes, so um, first of all, thank you for sharing this platform um, with me. Um, so I actually, I found out about Art Week about um, last year. That was my first time knowing of this. And um, I, I love the fact that um, a bunch of local artists were taking their own initiative to kind of galvanize the community to bring more attention and energy and, and potential profit to people that are beautifying the city, that are, that are providing aesthetics and experiences that only us artists can do. So um, I kind of uh, linked up through Rachel to kind of find out how I could be involved. Now, um, you read my bio, so you know my hands are in many, many things. So, yeah. I, I, so like, I, it's like Art Week is always something I, I want to, you know, be a part of, but I never know how it's going to actually look. And this year, with coronavirus, with, like, with a, a lot of things happening, like, I feel, <laughs> I feel like it's kind of like, all over the place of Art Week, but here I am showing up for Art Week through this interview, and I, I kind of want to just let people know about it and, you know, uh, have people connect with Rachel and other key organizers so they can find out all these events that are going on around the city. A lot of them are probably going to be more virtual now, but there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on, and, and, and you've got a lot going on. I, I can't imagine trying to launch a business at this time. But <laughs> I think that the, the purpose of the company is, that is, the way I understand it, is to support artists, serve businesses, and assist communities in general. That's some of what I've yep. read about it. And the very name, Speak Your Peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, in some ways, maybe there's a, this is a great time. Was this all coincidence? Or did you purposely launch at this time because of this time? Well, I, I, <laughs> I was actually like, I've been working and leading up to um, launching a business for a while. And this, um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic actually um, gave me more time to, because normally a lot of my time is spread out with performances and appearances and, um, you know, a lot of public activity, all that stuff that's shut down right now. So mm -hmm. thanks to COVID-19, I was able to pump my brakes and do a lot of the foundational work and planning that, that it takes a lot to launch a business. So this time actually accelerated my launch um, as well as kind of mess with it because I wanted to do something more communal. <laughs> you know, a lot more, I wanted to like bring people together for it, stuff like that. But I've got to <laughs> use this time to really focus on my business development for sure. Well, 
I love something that Families United Action Network wrote about you. And it said that you're, quote, most energized by work that revolves around youth development, social justice-based art, and building yep. empathetic and empowered communities. Uh, yep. Right now more than ever, we probably need empathetic and empowered communities. And I'm wondering if you could tell me more about what you mean by that phrase, what that phrase means to you, empathetic and empowered communities. What does that look, feel, smell, taste like? Well, okay. Well, well, that's a beautiful question. So l l let's take it to where let's take it to raising in the sun. That's that's common ground for us, right? So that's yeah. a perfect example. Like that play, and shout out to Lorraine Hansberry. Um, that play itself is like really, really what I mean when I say like using the arts as a transformative tool. Okay. So for those that don't know. The context of that play is rooted in, in many things. That there, there's um, there's racist talk, racism discussed. There is gender roles discussed. There's poverty discussed. There's a lot of social issues embedded in that play, and, and the cast reflects the you know the different nationalities of the people involved. Now, when we when we face problems, how how we how we solve our problems through the play kind of creates. Like like a, a safe a safe space for the audience to kind of see conflict resolution or to see um, different cultures work out the, their own issues together without without the risk of it you know being in real time. So theater has always been a great tool to invite people into into perspectives or moments that 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 they could never be in and, and allow them to observe so they can kind of see what, what comes up. What do they feel? What do they think? Why these things are happening? So um, I, 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 I've experienced that as an actor, that um, I can use the arts to invite people into having empathetic connection with me, like things I face in real life through a play. So now you, you, you're getting a sense of what I go through every day, but I didn't have to risk my personal you know, story. I just showed you, you know, the essence of it. So that's, that's, that's one example of um, how, how empathy and arts are, are, are meant to be working together at all times and they can really transform people. And so through your business, how do you plan on making these kinds of artistic transformative experiences take shape through a for-profit business uh, when your history has been primarily not for profit, might be fair to say. Yeah, well, so now I would kind of like through my um, theater experiences, my poetry and hip hop, I kind of want to just use those skills to work with organizations and individuals that, that want to help build new workshops, like build workshops and build learning experiences with me, use, using those, those tools, using those mediums to create the change they want. Like um, I could work with teachers to come up with workshops that they could use for a class for one day or for as long as a whole residency. Or I could, you know, do a, do a workshop um, with a business um, that is looking to engage their employees' creativity and their imagination more, or, and kind of use my resources to help plan things with people that are already that have the same intention but may not have the means to create these these experiences. So it's a very collaborative effort, you know. But um, we can kind of create some unique moments for specific learning for all ages. So you get this great quote. Uh, that you wanted to make your own vehicle for creating the positive change you want to see in the world. So speak your piece might be that vehicle, but what is the Absolutely. change you want to see? Um, well, I want to see people um, unafraid to engage with others, with, with people that are different than them. I think the arts, it, my experience with the arts has been um, Basically, I've been able to merge with so many different um, statuses and classes of people and get a taste of, of the diversity that actually makes life rich. And I've been able to appreciate the differences in others rather than fear them. That's probably the main thing that I feel like we could use right now. And also, I think that a lot of people have great things inside of them that are suppressed through work, um, so suppressed through a society that doesn't really allow you to bring your full self. So I kind of really want to help people become more expressive and share more of their gifts because I think the world needs us to be more of who we are. Not like more services pushed in us, but more things pulled out of us. 
is kind of what I, what I would really love to see because I think we have much more treasure in us than we know. And the art, the arts can really help bring them out, you know, in various ways. So that's kind of the change I would like to see. Is that then kind of, I was going to ask you about your goals uh, when you do youth development work. Is that really kind of, did you just articulate what that goal is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that's really like the, the main goal. Um, if, if you can walk away from the interacting and speak your piece and you feel more liberated to, to be who you are, you feel more confident and delivering the messages that mean something to you. And maybe you feel like you learned a little bit about something that you're not used to. Um, then I feel like we have fired on all cylinders with Speak Your Peace. So then some people will, will get things out of it that I can't even imagine. And I, I'm all for that as well. <laughs> That's good. Well, as you know, this podcast is really trying to be about uh, building community, both the arts community and building community through the arts, and you're certainly starting to touch on this in a number of ways. But when you think about this more idyllic community you would like to see, this empowered, um, engaged, um, empathetic uh, community, what needs to happen? What What is it that you want to target, if you will, with the arts? Kind of, I don't know if it's a next steps question, or what would be the best work to be done uh, through your business and through your arts in the near term future. And then, then I'd love to touch a little longer term to get this community moving okay. forward in that vision. Absolutely. So um, I've always I can no longer hear Emmett. Oh no! If anyone can hear me. Oh, it, it cut out for a second. Yeah, you cut out for a second, but I think you're back now. I can't see you, but I can hear you. All right. Well, um, okay. We'll, we'll take. Welcome it. to Zoom. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, we haven't been doing too bad. Yes, um, we have. We okay, so um. <laughs> Yeah, um, so one thing I would say is like, one thing I really want to focus on right now, and I've been doing this for um, several years, but there's artists in the city right now that have um, that have a message in them already. They have this message, um, but, but they may not have other artists to like help develop them, help work on stage presence, help work, work on delivery of their message, help work on the branding of, of who they are. So um, a lot of speak your piece is also um, dedicated to serving artists that that just need that need a service from another artist you know that has some pretty good experience to kind of help them develop their craft because they're already making the change they're already impacting lives they're already involved they, they just may want to take it to a new level so one I want to get out you know, I want to support the artists particularly performance artists because that, that's my expertise I want to help them hold more of their time. And also, right now, I'm looking to, um, I've done many residencies and workshops with schools and organizations. Once things open back up, or even on a micro level, because I'm not getting to hear you right now. I, I lost you at working in a micro level. Oh. Uh, I'm hearing you, you hear now. now. Yes. Okay. I, yeah. Um, since, you know, we're in the age of social distance distancing, uh, I'm willing to like scale down some of the, the workshops I've done for, you know, for classes of 30 to, to you know, just give really enriching experiences um, to use right now. Like I, I've already, I've already done that work. So I, I would kind of um, want to work, work with teachers and kind of come up with, with some new ways to, to get to these kids and access them. Cause I'm used to coming in, in the classroom, like being that guest artist in your school, you know, and, and, and making magic but we don't have that so speak your piece i'm willing to work with teachers that are going through this very unsettling time and this very strange time to kind of um give some of the kids what they've been missing as well during this time well i got the privilege of watching online uh, a performance that you gave of your piece uh, rise inspired by my yes. um still i rise 
And I was wondering, because I think not only did I find it inspiring, uh, inspirational watching it, but clearly people who had been present at the time were finding it that way as well. And I was wondering if you would mind sharing a piece of that. I don't mind at all. I don't mind at all. Okay. You see, I realize that we've been lied to. We've been oppressed and deprived too. But they can't damage what's inside you. Because like mighty Angelou, we're going to rise too. See, I've been living in this nation through sensory deprivation, cultural appropriation, incarceration, probation, promotion of self-hate, liberty, still waiting to come, police waving their guns, you best be watching your tongue. They even aim at the young. I pray I see 31. When will this evil be done? What have our people become? March to the beat of the drum. What if the drummer is scum? Will you keep dancing or run? Simple question, right? What good is ambition without direction? America lacks affection. See, Department of Correction with you got protection from just being objective. I speculate on this prison state, and they call me a skeptic. But I'm more like a cocktail, just privy to some knowledge. If ignorance is bliss, the country's happy and agnostic. But on another topic, when I turn my focus cosmic and fly over the continent, the future, okay, I no longer react. See, I'm more inclined to watch it, leave it up to God, but she told me that I got this. So I'm going to do my work here, day to day and year to year, coast to coast and peer to peer, my mama smiling ear to ear. Keep the faith and leave the fear. Keep it up because change is near. Keep it up because change is near. One more time. I said, keep it up because change is near. Take a stand or even kneel. Talk your shit like key and peel. Show them how you really feel. Show them how to keep it real. And that is right. <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. And, and so it really begs the question for me, uh, do you really feel that change is near? The kind of substantive change, systemic change, meaningful change. Do you believe it's near? Or... Or can it be near with the right transformative art? <laughs> I don't mean that lightly. <laughs> I delivered that lightly, but I don't mean it lightly. Yeah, I, I understand that. Um, I feel like we are more near, <laughs> we are nearer, <laughs> if you will, than we ever have been because of all of the work from the Maya Angelou's of our of our um, of, of, of our past to the, the parents and the teachers and the art activists and the educators of today. I feel like everybody has been playing their part. That's why I love to reach back in the past just to bring us back to the present because we're like continuing this this similar fight, this same fight really for justice and everyone is doing their part, you know? I do feel like we're getting to a unique place um, in this call for justice because I think there's more voices now. I think there's more people that are willing to you know, share their voices. And, and I think that's where Speak Your Peace fits in because if you have the heart for justice, you need to know how to communicate that in your own way. You don't have to do it the way people are telling you on the media or some people are trying to pressure you. You have to do it the way that's true for you. And that's what Speak Your Peace is all about. That's beautiful. And I encourage people to go to Speak Your Peace, P E A C E L L C dot com. And I also want to remind everybody that every new business uh, can benefit from a little startup money. So go to the GoFundMe page for Speak Your Peace and give Emmett's business a little early boost. Uh, it's, it's a fun site. And we'll be back on Art Week TV live at 7 p.m. Tuesday for a conversation with Leo Bird, an inspiring uh, comedian who faces the daily challenge of autism. That's Tuesday at 7 on Art Week TV. Please take full advantage of all of Art Week has to offer. I'm Pat Bode. Thanks to Rachel Boozy and the entire Art Week team. And Emmett, thank you so much to you, Emmett Phillips, uh, for listening to this special edition of 900 Views. I thank all of you. See you Tuesday evening. Thank you, Emmett.